Hello again, I am Blunty, and the images you're looking at now, while you listen to the gentle droll of my Australian articulation, were all shot with a lens that cost me just $20. Well, 20 bucks plus shipping. It's got a 35mm focal length and, via a simple mount adapter, I'm using it on a Micro Four Thirds camera body, the Olympus EP3 to be specific. And thanks to the 2 times crop factor on Micro Four Thirds cameras, that means I'm shooting at an equivalent focal length of 70mm with a big wide f1.7 aperture. And as you can see, that particular combination can offer up some very handsome aesthetics. It's probably the most rewarding 20 quid I've ever spent on camera equipment. And this is what it looks like. It's branded Fujian, or Fujian, Fujian, I don't know how to pronounce it properly. It's a little C-mount lens, which is a legacy cinema lens mount that was once quite at home on 16mm film movie cameras, and these days can be found on some security cameras and industrial equipment. And thanks to the handy dandy fact that the sensor on Micro Four Thirds cameras is very close to a frame of 16mm movie film, lenses like this are very easy to use on and work very well with them. The ease of which a whole bunch of different lenses can be used on Micro Four Thirds cameras is in fact one of my favourite things about the system. Back to the lens. It is fully manual of course, and while most camera lenses click and lock their aperture adjustments into place nice and accurately, lenses like this are much more analogue in their adjustment. Each aperture wheel is what's called clickless, or stepless, or just smooth, which is especially useful in video recording to make on-the-fly adjustments in a smooth and natural looking way. With the aperture wide open, the bokeh, a word that's used to describe the aesthetic quality of the out-of-focus bits, is quite fluid and gentle. You'll also often get a kind of swirly effect around the edges and in the corners of your image. The word bokeh is often sometimes used to talk about the shapes points of light make when out of focus. I like to call them the bokeh blobs. And again, shot wide open, this lens offers up some wonderfully soft, perfectly round bokeh blobby bits. But start to close the aperture down and you get a kind of starry geometry even further down and it gets square a quirky little bugger as is the case with most lenses of this type you shouldn't be expecting razor sharp focus or super punchy magazine style images and indeed the very reason shooters with experimental attitudes like these things so much is because of their almost dreamy creamy and decidedly analog old school look Saturation is muted, the image often has an almost liquid feel. You will get decently sharp focus near the centre, but it's that gentle kind of soft sharpness that's hard to put to words properly. And if you stop it down a little bit, it does manage to get a bit sharper still, but go too far and things get soft all over. But let's face it, no one wants to shoot a lens like this stopped down if they can avoid it at all. The fun happens when it's wide open, when it's supple, bloomy, and when it's a little bit unpredictable. It reminds me quite a lot of the 50mm lens that was on the old film SLR loner camera that I learned to shoot on back in college, back in the days when digital cameras were still pretty crappy and a megapixel would cost you a black market kidney. It will focus nice and close, so your depth of field can get impressively thin, but again, stop down just a scooch and it become a lot more practical. And it really is in low light situations where you can easily shoot wide open, during dusk and dawn where this fella really churns out the most interesting images in my opinion. It does some truly beautiful things with the golden glow of dawn or the bloom of electric illumination. The light just seems to start flowing like honey. It's, it's hard not to be romanced by this bargain bin tube of glass. Those in the know about such things may think it looks kind of familiar, and in fact side by side with an identically specced lens from a company called SLR Magic, who are well known and highly regarded for their range of often quirky lenses, it's easy to see that their lens is a modified version of this one. They want $150 for theirs, which does come with a nice lens hood, and the mount is pre-modified and refitted to couple directly and natively with your camera, whether it be a Micro Four Thirds system or Sony's NEX cameras. While the one I snatched up cost me just $20 and works just fine with a simple mount adapter that I think cost me about $12 somewhere along the line. But as far as I've been able to tell by looking at what other people have shot with the SLR Magic 35mm lens and what I've been getting on this one, they seem unsplittable on performance. But then again, I don't own one of SLR Magic's lenses and I've never shot with one either, so I can't say that for absolute sure. 
Like I said at the start, it's pretty much the best $20 I've ever spent on camera gear, and it's a very nice reminder that while photography can easily become a bank balance brutalizing hobby, it is entirely possible to be a happy chappy on the cheap side of shutter buggery too. And inexpensive gear doesn't by any means translate to crappy results. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful or interesting or educational or just kind of neat. I'm Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.